All right, folks, so I've built the new reduction zone. As you can see, it's a little bit crude, but pretty robust. The actual, I guess, uh, thermal cracking area right here by FEMA standards for a five horsepower engine needs to be 1.5 inches across the bottom. I built mine a little bit bigger at about two and a quarter across the bottom, and it needed to be about 3.6 inches at the very top up here, and mine's about about that, so I'm gonna be a little bit bigger, about four inches across the top. So what I'm gonna do now is take this, insert it into my current reduction zone. Uh, this is upside down, it used to go flipped into my barrel. Um, take this, insert it into there, weld it flush, and then do a test run video. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I have the insert, the new um, reduction zone, and um, I guess thermal cracking area inserted into the bottom of my old reduction zone and welded in. There's the hole. I welded around it like that. Um, or I put this piece of metal over it and welded around it like that so uh, it would be sealed up more because I couldn't get the welder down inside of there to seal around where I welded it. So I figure, I guess that's just more um, insulation so it can get hotter. Well, time to flip this thing back over, put it inside the barrel and seal it back down with the tin foil, which looks like it worked pretty well. I mean, there's no tar running down the outside of my barrel and there's a white ring where the there's no tar that escapes. I'm going to do the tin foil thing again, seal it back down, find a blower for it, and do a test run. See you soon. All right, I don't know how important this is to you, but just thought it was interesting that my radiator is catching a lot of uh, crud, a lot of water and tar. As you can see, there's a puddle of water there and a puddle of tar right there. As I unpeel this to Oh, yeah. That might be what's causing all the blockage, because I've sealed up my system a little better now. And uh, now when I put the blower on it and close all the air intake areas, only a very small amount of air blows out of the blower. So that means that the system sealed up pretty well. So I guess that's kind of good news. All right, guys. So... I'm about to do a test run on the gasifier, but first I'd like to point out something you might have noticed. I removed the terrible obnoxious radiator from it because I found that the pipe diameter was too small throughout the whole thing and creating too much drag on the system. Um, and I moved my hay filter up to right off the cyclone. And then I tested this, my blower, and it still was not blowing as much as it was if I just took it straight off the system and let's, uh, let it go. So. I did the last thing I know what to do to reduce the drag at this point, and that was remove all the hay from the filter, which I know is not advisable because uh, that cleans the gas. So, But today that's not the point. The point is to see if my gas fire will actually produce burnable syn gas and then uh, try to figure out what to do from there. Uh, hopefully I do produce burnable syn gas, and I guess I'm about to do the test run. So stick around for that. Thanks for watching. Alright folks, so to make this test run hopefully as successful as possible with the low-powered blower I have, um, this is my desperate attempt to create some heat down in there. I've got charcoal from the last run. I don't know how well you can see in there, but I did do a burn test and the charcoal does burn, so I'm going to add that in there first. And then I went down my woods and cut the hottest burning wood in North America, which I'm lucky enough to have, uh, called Osa Orange. I can insert a picture of the BTU chart. But it's hotter than ironwood and it was at the very top of every BTU uh, burning chart I looked at on the internet. So hopefully I can get some good heat out of this gasifier today. Hopefully I can get some burnable syn gas. So I'm going to load it up with charcoal first, light it, come back to the video. 
All right, folks, the charcoal's lit now for about a minute. You can look down inside there and see. As you can see, it's burning pretty hot now, which I'm pretty happy about. I cut these pieces a little large, so I had to get down here and find the smallest ones to throw in first, but this stuff is bone dry. It's been sitting in my garage for about a week, and I cut it when it hadn't rained at all. And this stuff has been dead for many years, so I'll show you me dropping that down in there. But this is, this might be the hardest burning, uh, the hottest burning wood in the world. I'm leaving the top open right now just for better airflow. I don't think I have enough airflow out the air intakes, or from the air intakes in total. So I might have to wedge a stick under there or something. Just another design flaw. But, uh, there it is. I can hear it popping, which this wood is known for. All right, I'll get to, I wish I could talk a little more. This stuff, I used to cut this firewood and sell it. And normal hardwood around here sells for about $50 a rick. And this stuff could go for 75 if you found the right buyer because it burns just that much longer and that much hotter. So I guess I'll cut to the, uh, when this thing actually starts getting really warm, I'll cut to the burn off or the attempted burn off. All right, stick around. Thanks for watching. Well, folks, the gas fire has been going for about five or six minutes now, and I'm starting to see uh, liquid drip out of my um, blower there, so that's a result of getting rid of the, um, the radiator. But what I have noticed is this very, very dirty sin gas does burn. It doesn't stay lit, but it does burn. I know you probably can't see that in the video because it's really hard to see out here in daylight also, but I hold the torch up to it, a lot of the vapor gets, uh, I guess, it gets burnt and disappears, but when I take the torch away, it stops burning. So I guess that's a sign that if maybe if I had a stronger blower, it would get hot enough, and if I got a good cooling system that got rid of all the water condensate or all the water vapor in that gas maybe it would stay lit so I guess that's my next step thanks for watching all right now so I've removed the blower and I'm just gonna let that hedge apple wood in there the osage orange wood in there turn into charcoal as best as possible with the heat that's in there right now if you can see I got a lot in my bio crude or I mean my uh, tar catcher and I even got some from that short, maybe 10 or 15 minute test run. I got some in there and I can see a lot of junk running down the walls of my filter container. And then inside my filter tube, completely black. So that's not a good sign. I'm just going to leave that like that to um, let that gas off. Maybe I'll try to light it real quick. Yeah, no, I won't. Uh, let that gas off in an oxygenless environment and try to get some of the hardest charcoal in the world for my next test run for when I actually get a real blower. Uh, I know this video series has been kind of dragging on, but uh, it's a learning experience. Don't have, you don't gotta watch it. So <laughs> see you next time.